Well, Project Esesme is on a serious mission to provide free Wi-Fi to the masses. Today, we're checking in with Chief Operations Officer Zahir Khan to get into the DNA of how this really all comes together. And we'll also be checking out some hotspots. Zahir, how are you? Very well, thanks. Thanks for having me here. Oh, well, thank you for having us. So I think it's time that we check out how the network all comes together. Please, let's go. Well, Zaheer, as they say in life, it's always very important to have a good backbone. And this looks like a serious spine to the entire operation. Yes, it is. This is actually the heart of the operation. This is where everything gets managed and monitored via our network operation center. And we actually know when a site goes down before it impacts the end user. How does security play a part on a network like this? Well, it's a very interesting question. Firstly, there's two parts to security. One is the actual security that where people need to protect their own information while they're actually transacting online. That is entirely in the user's area. The second part is network security, where we actually have to control what users can view over this network. And for that, we use global standards that actually control what a user wants to connect to and then either allows or rejects that particular request. Now, this is a mission to cater to the masses. How many people do you think more or less actually operate on this network? Well, currently we have in excess of 400,000 people that have actually connected to the service. And we have a return rate of approximately 85% which means the majority of people that experience the service come back on a regular basis to actually use the service again. We see people checking in and tagging themselves all the time, but on Project Isizwe, is geotagging and kind of a big brother approach used? So on our side, we actually do not track any personal information. We, the only thing we do use is a device MAC address, which then allows us to control the amount of usage that particular user or individual has access to. And on our service, we allow 250 megabytes per device per day. And that MAC address actually allows us to control that. From a technical perspective, what are the benefits for users? Well, one of the key benefits is First and foremost, education. We've seen the highest volume of users actually connecting to educational content online. The second most important thing is economic development. We see people on a regular basis searching for jobs and they're using the Tibetza portal, which is available unlimited access, to actually search, use Gumtree for job searches. The third thing is social inclusion. People are actually using it for social media purposes and that's, that's just a great way to get people connected. Well, our Big Brother sources have whispered little things in our ears and we've heard something about Wi-Fi voice and Wi-Fi drive-in. Of course, the Wi-Fi drive-in is a world first. It's the old concept of a drive-in environment where people actually come into the open area and actually sit in their vehicles and watch movies. However, think about it in the digital age. We have now enabled Wi-Fi drive-ins, which we'll, we expect to launch on about April to May this year. And that environment will allow users to come in there with Wi-Fi enabled devices and actually watch movies. And these are Hollywood quality movies. Uh, Netflix for what? <laughs> Eat your heart out. The second thing would be the Wi-Fi voice. Wi-Fi voice is all about once you've got this network layer, it's about what you do with it. And the first and most important thing that the city of Chuane has asked us to enable is free calls over the network between devices connected which means by later this year which i expect to be september october you'll actually have the ability of individual devices connected to the free wi-fi network that'll be able to call each other at no cost now swanee kind of has the upper hand on all of this at this point so who exactly funds this the entire project is funded by the city of uh, chuane they actually unlock funding for because it forms part of what they envisage to be the future for the next generation. Mm. The, the reality is in today's world, you can't have young people that are not connected. Mm. And the digital divide actually keeps that gap being, from being bridged. And hence Project Disease has found a way with the city of Chuanya to actually bridge that gap. How would you describe your typical user? I think the average user over this network is between the ages of 20 to 35 and that's largely because those are the people that have the highest demand for connectivity on the wi-fi tv channel we see young people it's a lot easier to communicate with them through visual images and that's why video res resonates largely with that audience tell me a little bit more about the five channels that you actually offer so so far we've enabled five channels four to low low income communities and that's at Ridgeville, which is the channel called Atville, Mamelodi, which is a channel called Mums, Soshanguve, which has a channel called Sosh, and the CBD, which is just their simple CBD. 
the fifth channel is My City. And My City is all about the initiatives that the city of Chuan is bringing through the communities to help uplift and create economic development in those areas. Strangely enough, we've seen that the My City channel is the most popular channel of all of them. So everyone's really keen to understand what's taking place from the city of Tuani. Well, Zahir, thank you so, so much. And here's to free Wi-Fi, really giving Tuani the edge. Well, it seems that an average day out at the park isn't just that anymore because now you can actually have Wi-Fi at your disposal as well. So let's go and see exactly how useful it is. Hi, guys. How useful has it been for you to have Wi-Fi in an area like a park? Uh, it's very much useful. Um, I'm here almost every day and it's a good atmosphere. It's a nice space. Uh, there's not a lot of things going on. It's very chilled and calm. Are you making use of the free Wi-Fi? Yes, I am. And how have you found the experience of using it? Is 250 megabytes enough? Yeah, it is because I have to do as correlated. Sometimes I go search for jobs for my sisters. Stuff like that I do. So it's very enough for me. So I see you have your books and your files and your notes. You're actually studying and making use of the Wi-Fi as well? Yes, I'm studying. So it actually assists me a lot. Now I don't have to stress about buying a time or going to the internet cafes. I just come here to the park and then I can access it and it assists me. So it's quite useful. Does it excite you that free Wi-Fi is in development and aggressively actually on the go? I was actually hoping that by this time it would be all over Pretoria, but I think it's a good start. The Union Buildings is a central place for everyone to access it and get a good start. I see you are all really enjoying the free Wi-Fi as a group of friends. Is it really cool to have that at your fingertips? Yes, it is. Because like we can download anything we want, music, do some researches and all those stuff, yes. I'm glad you said research, so I know that there's homework being done here as well, and it's not just fun. Okay. It's very yes, tiring. it was history yesterday, uh, I mean, Monday, Friday, Friday, it was history, and yeah, I really, it really helped me, yeah. Do you think that Wi-Fi has actually become more important to you than airtime? Yes, yes, because these days we have social media and we text more, we don't actually use airtime and call because we like uh, going on the net and talking to our friends and it's easier. Hi guys. Hi. Are you making use of the free Wi-Fi? Yes, we are. Okay, and have you found it really useful and beneficial? Yes, I have a lot. Right now I'm doing my studies. I'm writing an assignment, an online one, and I couldn't do that without this Wi-Fi. Okay, so you've got your earplugs in. I'm guessing that you're all about the music. Yeah, like right now I'm also using this free Wi-Fi on my phone. I'm a big fan of YouTube actually, I always go on YouTube. What I like about it here on YouTube is that this Wi-Fi is too fast because normally you would watch videos on YouTube and they will get to freeze a bit then play freeze. So here they don't freeze at all, they just keep on playing, that's what I like about it. And do you think that 250 megabytes is enough? No, it's not really enough because I'm here for Wi-Fi and I will leave when it's finished. I think it should be unlimited, actually. Right. Unlimited Wi-Fi is really what we're going for. Fingers crossed, Tony.